The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I posted the chart here of the Dow Jones, okay? Now, you'll notice uh, I, don't, I haven't checked the last 15 minutes or so because I was getting ready for the show. But you'll notice here, this level right here uh, was the 78% level. Now, the NASDAQ has not even made the 382 yet. We'll go into that. But if you'll remember yesterday's show, we pointed this out, the fact that all those targets had been net, been met and that it was most probably going to go a lot lower because there was no rally at that time. And then you can see what's happened today. Now, that means when these patterns fail, they're going down to the next level. That's all that means. That's what pattern recognition is so powerful. If you take a look at this, you can see this small ABCD pattern that led to the top. We followed that all the way. We had the beautiful 135 pattern right there. I mean, look at that. Just there's 135 lined up perfectly. And I don't know if we've held this level down there at 33, 34,360, whatever that number was. I don't know if it's held or not, but it tells we're probably going to go lower anyway. But we're very oversold now, folks. We're down five or six days. That in itself makes the market oversold. The key, from my perspective here, is if you get a little two or three day rally at a 3A2, get ready to go short. If the, um, we'll do one thing at a time here because I know the folks here are real busy and I don't want to uh, get too uh, involved in stuff that uh, we can't go into very much. But I do want to talk to you uh, a little bit about the, uh, the NASDAQ. In fact, I'll bring this up now. With a little bit of luck, I'm going to try it. And let's go. Uh, see, it's all changed again. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know what to do. I really don't. Let me ask now if they uh, – is the chart posted now? Uh, see, I can't, I, can't, I can't be in Discord at the same time because then I can't see what's going on. And that's very frustrating for the old cowboy. Let me try it one more time. Maybe we can get this puppy working. So hold on just a second here. Okay, all right, come over. Ah, man alive, I cancel this thing. I don't know what to do. It's not getting charts in, folks. So I, 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 I just frankly, I don't really. Okay, here's the uh, the Nasdaq, folks. You can see here we just about made the 382 just a little while ago. I don't know if it's going to hold or not, but the Dow Jones, which has been the weakest, and we've been talking about that, is uh, already made the 78% of that move. That tells you how bearish that the uh, the uh, mar market is for the Dow Jones. So Nasdaq is still holding up relatively well. That's primarily due to the mega stocks. If you looked at those last night, some of them looked absolutely fabulous. I mean, they really did. You look at Google, Amazon, uh, NVIDIA, and uh, Broadcom, gee whiz, it's hard, hard to make a case because they've hardly backed off at all. But if you look at Meta and you look at Microsoft, and you look at Tesla, uh, those, are, those are the ones that are you know, leading the market down on the NASDAQ because they are, in fact, they've rolled over quite a bit. We're going to try to cover a couple of those. In fact, we're going to do one right now with a little bit of luck. And I'll get this up here so that we can see some of these. I want to show you uh, Microsoft because that has been the leader of the pack. And it is uh, not the leader of the pack anymore. And it is one of the leaders, of course, you know what, which is the AI revolution. And there you go. It just disappears again. And if I do it twice, it'll disappear again. Let's try it again. Well, they tell me that it works and then it doesn't. So I'm not sure how we're going to do this. i do the screens. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on just a minute. I don't know if they can see my screen or not. Does the screen? No, it doesn't come up. I'm, I'm really... <laughs> you know, the technical part of the business, folks, is the toughest part for me because I... <sighs> Dear God in heaven, hold on. 
I'm going to take a deep breath, folks, and by golly, if it don't come up this time, I am going to turn in my red badge of courage here at TFNN after 17 years and say, I just can't do this stuff anymore because it drives me nuts. And I don't, And nuts for me is just a very short drive. So hopefully it'll come up here this time. Well, there it is. Okay. There is the 382 retracement here in Meta, uh, Microsoft. And as you can see, it hasn't done anything. It's starting to roll over already. Whereas we've got Broadcom and all these others are way, way up here. But not with Meta, not with Tesla, not with uh, Microsoft. And what was the other one? There was a, the fourth one in there. Well, anyway, those are the big seven. You know, four of the big seven are not doing nearly as well. But I understand that that uh, uh, NVIDIA is down about 16 or 17 points today, which, you know, when you have a $500 stock, that's a, that's a cup of coffee. So it doesn't really mean uh, too much of that. Uh, our guest today will be Mike Moore of Moore, Moore Analytics talking to us about this monster move we're seeing in crude oil. A uh, big move yesterday, down $2 a barrel, up $2 a barrel today, up 10 of the last 11 days. Uh, breaking out into new high ground, and, and uh, he'll give us a pretty good idea of what we're looking at uh, watching some of these things uh, unfold here today. So that's primarily what I'm watching here today. Uh, we had a really nice trade in wheat yesterday, uh, buying it right on the low, and it had a nice rally of about 20-some cents, which was uh, – we were expecting pretty much something like that. The first $500 was easy. The second $500, not so much. So we had a – Really interesting uh, time with that because it lined up absolutely perfectly. Uh, unfortunately, they don't always do that, but that's what pattern recognition is about because when they fail, and they do fail, you've got to stand aside, and that's the key to what we're doing here as we're watching these things unfold each day. Ba basically, folks, someone asked me the key to what I do. If I told you what I do, I tell you every day what I do, and nobody listens to me. They really don't. I mean, even people that I think listen to me don't listen to me. I know one thing really right. Yes, Johnny, I know. Just give me a second. It's ABCD. ABCD is there all the time, and that's all I really need to know. You can take the news. You can take all the information on oscillators, moving averages, stochastics, all that stuff, and put it in, the, put it in a little uh, uh, desk, a top drawer, and keep it for a, a rainy day. But if you just look at ABCD, that's going to get you to the promised land. And I really, I've looked at so many charts over the past 60 years. I would bet that there's not a handful of people on this planet that has looked as many charts as I have over the last 60 years. And part of it is that's my hobby, that's my passion, that's what I like to do. That's why I've never had to work a day in my life ever since 1976. Well, I had six years at Drexel, but that was easy money. Uh, but I've really you know, worked for myself based on one thing, and that's A, B equals CD. I tell, tell people that, learn A, B, C, D, learn A, B, C, D, but not doesn't sink in, and I don't know why. And uh, I've tried to tell them that's the secret, and I show them how to do it, and that they still don't do it. So it's a little frustrating. When I saw my daughter this past uh, few weeks, you know, she was still doing it. She said, I don't do it often, Dad. She says, but I still like it. She says, it's like playing checkers or chess. I said, yeah, but you make a couple of bucks. She said, yeah. She said, I'm doing okay. So it's just A, B, C, D. That's all you got to look at. It's a sum total of all the buyers and sellers. And when they're wrong, and when they're wrong, get out of Dodge. That's all I can tell you. It's, uh, it's really quite that simple. I think we have a... Uh, a uh, oh, here we go. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter Market Insights firsthand. TFNN. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablet as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted a chart here of Tesla, and you can see it's been in a downtrend for quite some time. This last rally stopped, uh, you know, exactly at a 382. We're backing off from that level. Uh, I want to break the continuity here of the charts and stuff to talk about something a little different. When I first moved here uh, about 30 years ago, exactly 30 years ago, uh, next month, and um, I really enjoy Tucson. I used to come and visit uh, Walt Bresser here. Uh, because uh, Walt and I are friends and we work on cycle stuff together. I enjoy the people. I, I just really enjoyed everything about it. Uh, also, I wanted to mention what happened. Or the th I think it was the second year that I was here. We have Davis Month on Air Force Base. It's one of the largest Air Force bases in the world. And they have the F-16s that patrol the border for drug smugglers that come in on Piper Cubs and or other airplanes uh, through radar. They can be up in the air by about three minutes. Well, in one particular instance, there was a uh, small plane with a, a, a single engine, and they were flying below radar, but of course the radar caught them, and so the F-16 went out, and uh, they started chasing each other around the desert here, and finally the, F, the little guy in the plane, there were two men, and they fired a machine gun at the F-16, and the F-16 pilot uh, wired back to the base. He said, I'm being fired upon. And the guy said, you're what? He said, I'm being fired upon. He said, with what? He said, it looks like an AK-47 or an M-16. He said, I'm not sure. He said, okay, give him a blast across the uh, wings. He said, don't hit him. He said, just the vibration should take him down. And so they fired the, the, the cannons, and, of course, it uh, shook the plane enough that one of the wings came off. The plane crashed in the desert. Uh, both men were uh, alive but badly b broken up. One had a broken back, another had a couple broken legs. And they were on a, a ranch of one of the private ranchers out there. And those two gentlemen from Mexico, well, they're actually Mexicans. Uh, they were Mexican, U.S. Mexicans who are U.S. citizens, sued the US, United States government for uh, excess thing. And they won the case, believe it or not. However, it went to appeals court and it was thrown out because it was so, you know, these guys are still in prison. But anyway, that was the reason. What happened to this soccer team here with this that won the women's soccer where the number one guy that put it all together was fired because he kissed the girl. He was so excited about winning. And then what happened was he had another one. Uh, the girl came out 
and she had a uh, situation uh, where the soccer coach, the coach had never said anything, but because he was quiet and wasn't really adamant about this kiss, they fired him too. The two major people that got him to where they are, and that's not a very good thing, folks. I, I just can't imagine how life goes. I don't think the guy's being, you know, he's going to be prosecuted for sexual harassment. And God, anybody with a third grade that watched it on TV, there was nothing sexual about that. That was just a happiness kiss. But okay, Johnny, I'm going to get back to the chart. You can see here the Tesla, you know, it's been in a downtrend, folks, for almost three and a half months. So, you know, that's not a surprise. So we're going to take a look at a couple others here just to show you where we are. It's not going to be hard to do. But one of the big ones, of course, uh, is NVIDIA. And it's still, let's get it up in the air so we can see it. It's still way up there. Let's just get it, you know, be able to see it without too much trouble. And I know that they're going to, it's going to work good today. I don't know why it's going to come in so perfect. But look, there it is. On my second chance, it'll be there just like it is. I think it's, they call me second chance. And as we get this up here, whew, hold on just a minute here. Okay, here it is. If this doesn't work, I just start screaming and there it is. There's where we are with NVIDIA. We're, you know, we're still just a slightly below $500, so there's not much, you know, going on uh, in here. I haven't uh, seen whether the Dow held the 78% the, uh, level or not. I don't know if it's that important or not, and I don't know if the NASDAQ held the 3A2. All I know is, folks, get ready, because when you will get a day and a half or two-day rally here, get ready to sell it, because we got some really big stuff coming up to the downside. And it's not going to change. I mean, it's it's really a big deal. So well, I think we should pay, uh, you know, very, very close attention to that as we uh, look at some of these things unro un unfolding, okay? And that's really what we're watching here. we got to pay real close attention to this because uh, we're in an area where the market, and not many people uh, thinks it can, they think it can happen, and it can. And uh, I'm talking about giving back 20 30% of what we gained here. You know, we I've saw this happen too many times, and with the people that are looking at these markets, they're they just think they're eventually all going to go up forever. And you know what? They may be correct, but right now we're in the midst of a pretty significant correction. When the Dow Jones in five days can give up 78 percent of what it's made in the last three and a half weeks, that's a sign that the market is a lot weaker than some people might think that it should be, and that's true, and that's what you have to remember. So let's take a look at one other one here. That looks pretty good. This is the leader of the pack, folks. You talk about one that, uh, and it's one of the, you talk about a market that, and it follows uh, the numbers of Fibonacci like you can't believe. And as you can see here, on the next posting of this chart, I'm going to make this into a game. Hold on here. We'll get it up here one more time. And then we sh it always comes up on the second one. I don't know why it comes up on the second one. It won't come up on the first one, but it usually comes up on the second one. Why that is, I don't know. So here it is again, directly, and there it is. Why does it come up on the second one, not the first? Look at this beautiful channel, folks. All of those little tiny ABCDs all the way up. Look at them. Whoa, all kinds of little ABCDs. This is a 1.618 expansion of that. We break it. What did we do yesterday? We got right up to the 61% retracement, folks. Yeah, it works on yeah, it works on the second hit. So I just hit it twice and it's working. I I can hit things twice as long as they work and I'm I'm happy. That's all I can tell you. So anyway, that's what that's what you're looking at right there. I mean, it's hard to be a buyer there, but you know, people don't believe in Fibonacci and you know, sometimes this stuff doesn't work, boys and girls. You know, it really does. You know, other times you know, it's flat spot on and never misses. And well, never misses, but it, it's, you know, you have really strong things of how things moving, you know. Here's another one here that tremendously bullish. Take a look at Google. And by the way, I understand that uh, the Google of China, Baidu, has uh, uh, just came out and they had a big IPO of some kind. Well, this is going to take a double here. I don't know why it is. When I do it the second time, that was the first time. Here's the second time. And it'll work. So I'm not going to be concerned as long as it works a second time. I'll do it twice. And now we have Google at the third time. We're going to try Google the third time. And if that doesn't work, I can start screaming. And guess what? I will scream some more. Hold on one second here. Show you Google because this one has held up better than any of them. In fact, it made a higher high yesterday. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. I tell you, the technical part of this business is uh, more than the old cowboy can handle, folks. But we're going to try it one more time and see if we can get to show you what Google's doing. I don't know why it works sometimes, and other times it doesn't work. It just, it should, but it doesn't. Uh, boys and girls, take a look at Google on your own, and you'll be able to see that it's made new highs yesterday, and it's backing off a little today. That's really what we're watching here. I think we've got the uh, the Nasdaq almost hit the exact 382, folks, and the S and the Dow Jones is held up on the uh, you know what the other. So we'll uh, it held the 786 on the Dow Jones. I'll be darned. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we're back. I believe we have Mike Moore of More Analytics on the line today. Are you there, Mike? How are you, Larry? Thanks for having me. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's my pleasure, pal. You've been telling us this crude oil was rocking and rolling, and boy, it's sure rocking and doing a lot of rolling. Where do you think we're going here? We're going to go to $90 a barrel? It's not far away. Well, we still got a ways, I think. I mean, if you remember from the past couple shows, I've been talking about this large call in the Brent. Um, and we don't have the similar call in the WTI, but they're very similar, so I'm expecting the same kind of move out of the WTI. Mm -hmm. Let me just see here. Let me uh, do a screen share with you. 
I'm not showing the screen share on my side. Uh, I'll check with uh, tech with our folks at uh, there you go, in to see if there we go. you have uh, right. the screen app for. Um, no, I got it, Mike. I got it. Okay, good. We're ready to go then. So okay. fire away, my friend. You want to take a look at the uh, the crude first? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. So this is the WTI crude. Mm -hmm. Uh, just as a little backup here. Now, since we've been doing this on the show the past couple months, if you've been watching, you know that we've been bullish since the break above 65.31. Um, we've seen $22.76 of that. That was, bear with me a second here, 65.31. That was on a break back above and here. We've hedged that a few times on the break below here and here and here, and then take the hedge back off here. And now we're seeing more of that run up just as a uh, backstory to this. And then we've had other bullish calls in here. Uh, more recently, um, I'd said we were likely in the last stretch up from 64.58 with areas of possible exhaustion at 88.23 to 9.69 or higher. We came just shy of that area exhaustion of 88.23 with an 88.05 uh, high uh, the other day and it rolled over down to 85.96. So we'll have to see if um, uh, the upper part of this holds. We held this lower one just briefly there, then we held this, this one here. If we take out this line above, though, that's going to open up the upside and that could run open up a run for these higher levels in here. Mm -hmm. And that line's going to come in at... Roughly 88.52 plus two ticks per hour, starting at two o'clock. So that would open up the upside to um, to higher trade. But just backing up here for a second, we're just going to talk about Brent. <clears throat> um, right in here, I said the the break above the trade above 80. Can you see this, Larry? Is this big enough? <clears throat> yes. Yeah, it's coming in fine. Uh huh. Yeah, the trade above eighty two thirty three projects this upward thirteen dollars and ninety cents. And if you go back in some of the recordings of the show that we've done before, you can see that we called this from its inception. We've seen eight dollars and eighty two cents of that so far. So that still has a ways to go. Let me just jump over to the Brent here real quick. So the Brent that was the break above back in these areas we ran up then we put that on pause we held an exhaustion level up here broke below a bearish formation another bearish formation then took it off pause here and we've been running up take out this uh, main exhaustion level here which we held a few times and then we're holding the lower part of this exhaustion level here smack down looks like we're now we're going to test it again if we take out this line right here then that's going to open up the upside probably for a run up into these higher levels that line in the Brent's going to come in at 91.97 plus two ticks per hour as well at 2 o'clock p.m. So that's the story with the uh, with the crude and whatnot. Now, if these holds, if either of these hold these exhaustion levels and start failing back down below these highs like 87.37 in the Brent or – bear with me a second. If I have pauses in the uh, – in the presentation, it's it's to give you specificity. <laughs> <laughs> but if this rolls over That's and this good. settles back down below 84.16 to uh, 8391, then that would warn that we're heading into a bearish correction. Once we do see the bearish correction, uh, it should exceed $7.70 from whatever the high is. Okay. Okay. That's a, that's a substantial amount. Yeah. It would be a nice... Uh, and then, you know, I mean, it could be more than that, obviously, but we see that and then it launches back out of there. We could see a whole new bull, bull structure out of it. We'll have to see. Okay. I would note, though, that our Bob or unleaded gasoline has been chopping around a bit. This is, if I could pull this tightly, this is a well-formed topping formation. Now, that's not to say it's bearish right now, but if we come back down and we take this line out right here, not only is that going to project this downward 13 cents minimum, 22.5 cents plus maximum, 
Uh, that'll also start to also suggest the start to a new bear trend. So that could see far more than that. And if, um, yeah, so anyway, that's for the, the RBOB. And the RBOB almost broke below a bearish formation here, but it was within 10 ticks of the stop and then rallied back up. So just presently right now, this looks bullish. You take this line back out on the downside, that's going to be bearish and probably propel this right down to take this one out. Um, and the heating oil, that's been bullish since the last time we talked in the show. We broke above here. We've been rallying back up. And this is a really uh, rare position sometimes where the heat and the RBOB have kind of been at odds, having extreme moves in the RBOB to heat spread. Um, but the trade the, in heating oil, the trade above 308.30, wanted decent strength. We'd seen 16.87 cents of that so far. Um, and yeah, and now this also has a topping formation here. If this is to roll over and take this line out, then that's going to open up the downside to a substantial move to the downside as well. If all those happen in conjunction with the crude rolling over, it would definitely propel the crude to see the rest of that $7.70 to the downside. If we rally up and we take out this, this line that we've broken below here on the upside, then that's going to open up the upside to higher trade and to test some other exhaustion levels up above. And let me just – one other thing is we spoke about on, on the last uh, show is I, I talked to you a little bit about the importance of the DCD spread. The DCD yes, spread sure is did. a whole, whole calendar spread of the, the crude oil and that it can often be a harbinger of what you're going to see in the outruts. And uh, if you remember, we got bullish right here on the break back above this line at 410 and we've rallied up here to you know 783 right now. But more importantly, we took out this major formation right in here uh, around 6.11 or so, which I said would project this upward. Um, the trade above 6.08 to 6.11 projects this upward 225 ticks plus. And we'd seen 147 ticks of that yesterday, plus a little bit more. So that still has a ways to go. But that, that's a, a lower term and higher time frame uh, move in there. Okay, we'll, we got to pay a few bills, Mike, so stay with us and we'll be right back, okay? Right, yep. Okay. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hey, we're back, folks, with Mike Moore of Moore Analytics talking to us about crude oil, gasoline, and heating oil. Please continue, my friend. All right. Thanks. Hey, Can Mike, I want to mention cream? something. You know, I've talked to a lot of people yeah. over the years, and you're the best person I've ever met for energies. So keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. By the way, I thought I might just take a second and show you something that your, your viewers might find of interest. You know, when I'm blowing through these pages here and a lot of viewers are looking at this, they're probably looking like, like, wow, this is a lot of writing. <laughs> you know? A lot of this is place place setters for higher time frame calls that my clients don't necessarily have to read through this every day, but it's a place setter for higher time frame calls. So what does that mean? And I wanted to show you something that I don't send out to clients, but this is just for my own personal use. And this is what I, I guess I just named this page a profits counter. But if you can see here in crude oil, over here, you can see all these numbers here, right? So it says 1537, and then it shows a high of 130.50, and then the profit of 115.13. What this means is I started getting bullish when crude oil was trading $15 a barrel and 37 cents. And I maintained that bullishness up through $130.50. Well, there may have been hedges along the way, but it never negated my overall bullishness. So the profitability would have been up to 115.13. And then you can see the other different levels at which I got bullish. So 15.37, 23.45, 34.04, all the way up to still getting bullish, bullish in the 80s, the 90s. And the last time I was majorly bullish was at 101.90. And then this just shows the profitability on these. And that, what I do with that is then I take that and I fill in each one of these levels. And then you can see here, so I was bullish up, the last call I had was at 101.90, and then when we came back down through 109.15, or 119.15, I started getting bearish. So then you can see I was bearish down to 63, 64 for $55.51, and then these are the levels that I got bearish below all the way down. And then on an even lower time frame, so I got, I was bearish, all the way down from 68.60 was my last bearish call. And then I got bullish when it broke back above 65.31. I was bullish up to 88.07 for $22.76 and 68.70, and et cetera. So I just thought I'd, that might be of interest to your viewers. It's the same thing with you know, Arbob, Heat, Brent, Gas, mm -hmm. Oil, Bitcoin. And so the reason why there is a lot of writing here for for some of your viewers that might see this, they said, "Wow, this is confusing." I wanted to kind of clarify that up because this is written from a professional hedge fund perspective of if we are carrying positions on, on long term, medium term, short term, and how would you manage all these uh, as they interlay one another? Okay, makes good um, sense. It is. It's a little bit. You know, it's a little bit overwhelming to some. But if you look at it, you make good sense. So that's. Uh, your explanation is fine, so keep up the good work. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, do you want me to jump to natural gas? Oh, so I was telling you about the DST. So the DST is often a harbinger of those big moves. The Arbob, the heat spread, we've been seeing tremendous moves in here. I thought that this was the start of a new bull, uh, bull cur- bullish correction, but we rolled over to make an even lower low, and now I think we're in another bullish correction. So, and again, paying attention to what these spreads do can make enormous differences on uh, your equity in dictating which of these you should be long or short at any given time. Um, this heating oil crack really rolled over these past number of days. We got bearish up in here, here on a breakdown below here, bearish in here, bearish in here. And I think if we take this stuff out now, we're going to be even more bearish. But just to just to show you again that the, the uh, financial difference there is uh, to the tune of 12 grand in just a matter of four days or so. Do you want to take a look at the uh, natural gas? Oh, this yes, is sir. the uh, unleaded gasoline crack, by the way. I had large projections in here. We broke below this formation, this formation, this formation, another one down here. And again, that's to the tune of <clears throat> about $10,000 uh, within a week. Mm-hmm. Mike, explain to me yeah. again how, you know, we've got heating oils down quite a bit today, and we've got uh, our Bob is up quite a bit, well, and then we got the crude oil up. I mean, why don't they all run together? I mean, you'd think because they crack the crude oil into gasoline and heating oil, what makes the big difference between the two? Well, they often run, they, usually they're running together most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when some of them get exhausted, right, I mean, you can see here in this heating oil crack, it's just been a tremendous move. In fact, if you can read what I wrote here, I said uh, we held exhaustion at 23.53 of, uh, uh, with a 2493 low and rallied um, 3,315 ticks. So just mm-hmm. understanding that and, and that dictating whether you're long or short that heating oil um, from these lower lows, I mean, that's a matter of like 33 grand per contract. But you can see in general, the heat's leading this, is leading the crude in this general move up. Um, in the Arbob crack, I was just showing you a daily chart there, I'm sorry. We had a big, you know, leading this up mainly in here, but now this big crash down. So these can also, also, these also shift with the demand, right? With the demand for heating oil, uh, which is also used in diesel and, uh, or the heat, um, the uh, demand for unleaded gasoline just depends. Okay. Is that a good enough answer? Or is that that's, uh, that's spot on. Let's let's take a look at the natural gas. It's uh, always one that's interesting. So natural gas has rolled over here. We had been got. I just got bearish a couple of days ago. I said we were in a bullish correction and gets to move down from three hundred nine sixty which I said was like now complete. I said the trade below 272.50 projects this lower. We had seen 108 ticks of that so far, and now even more than that. And now we're sitting on that main formation that I warned you about, that if we break below there, uh, is really going to project this uh, even further to the downside, to the tune of 350 ticks plus. If we break below these lines decently and back up through them decently, then I would expect short cover and probably to rip right back up into here. Could be another 300, 300 tick move. <clears throat> Those lines come in uh, right here, 252.40 to 251.20 um, as of today, and just moved down slightly uh, overnight. And just on a more overall basis, as we've been looking at this, this is this is a daily chart In the natural gas, we we're in these lofty levels, came off real hard, and now we're just drifting down in this sort of consolidative basing kind of uh, dynamic. And this, it looked like it was shifting to the upside in here because we're getting higher highs and higher lows, but then that kind of shifted back over, and now we're having lower lows and lower highs. So we'll have to see. Maybe this ju- will just build a, a bigger, wider base. Eventually, if it launches out of uh, into a bull trend, though, out of a substantial base like this, it could be a sustained bull trend that would last for months, uh, possibly years. Okay, looks pretty good. I think we have a. Um, oh, we got th- we have thirty seconds before we come to our break. Could you stay with us here for the next segment because I want to ask you about the S and P. Okay. Yep. Okay, we'll be right back with Mike Moore. More analytics, folks. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hey, we're back, folks, because Mike Moore is going to talk to us about the S&P 500. What do you think, Mike? All right. Well, let's back up a little bit here. I said the uh, trade back above 44.13. We're on a renewed strength. We'd seen 134.75 of that. And then the trade above 44.66.75 projected this upward 64 minimum, 112 plus maximum. We've attained 82 of that before rolling over. Those are likely going to be put on hold today um, because it looks like we're going to leave a maintained gap lower today here, which would be bearish on the day and put the bullishness on hold. If we further break below, and just visually, as you may recall, those watching the show, that we got long, uh, got bullish again on the break above this line, bullish above on this line, and now we've sort of rolled over here. If we take this line out, that's going to warrant a pressure, and that line comes in at 44.34 even, minus 23 mm -hmm. per hour, starting at 130. And that would change at uh, 230. And then if we take this formation out right here, this is a substantial, well-formed formation. And that will come in at 43.99.71 plus 17 per hour. Um, and that would that would project us down into here into the 4250s so that would be a pretty substantial move um you know to the tune of eight grand a mini 
Likewise, if we were to break below this decently and back up through it decently, uh, that would warrant of substantial strength to come back into markets and probably a run right back up here. And when I say decent, that does not mean that's not some kind of light terminology I use. That's a specific number that I give out to my clients each day that changes every day. So. Hey, thank you, Mike. We'll be back yep. with you again next week. Okay, my friend? Mike Moore. Thank you, Brandon. See you all tomorrow, folks. May God thank bless. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate it.